process has begun to migrate the connections that are on the old capacitor onto the new board here, the standoff. The ground pin, which is also the one that connects the nut to the uh, connection where the capacitor was connected to, is pushed down there. You can see in the middle. The remaining four terminals serve that capacitor. The terminal in the middle will serve as the ground for the other side. You can see the two are disconnected. That old cap is pushed out of the way. That's just a marker for me right now to remind me of the 20 microfarad. That's all that did right there. Uh, the other one, the other 20 is now there. I'm staging everything in position before I put the caps on. I've already marked here on the side. You can see all the way at the base, the different uh, uh, symbol combinations there. And when then we're all done, I'm going to solder everything together. At this point, all the connections are removed from the capacitor. Uh, the bottom two had enough space in the holes that I was at least able to tack on the wires permanently. So I was able to, to tack on with solder lightly and still leave enough hole to get the capacitors in. And I wouldn't have to worry about them falling out. This wire and this wire and this right here are for the top one. I haven't done yet. So tacked, tacked. These ones were all seated but not tacked. And this one is yet to be done. This ground is original and I've left it. And the old capacitor that used to be here, which I've now removed, this is, by the way, this crossbar is that 100 ohm resistor that's still in question that doesn't exist on this unit. But just disregarding that for now, this is where the old capacitor used to be, this black wire, which was salvaged from a previous connection, now makes its way down to the 20. Uh, the black wire that's right here used to be what this green wire is right now that I installed because it was too short for the new run. So I put this green wire in, took the black wire out and used it here. Here's a last shot of everything placed in before the capacitors go in. Uh, I've worked on the top one now. You can see that the um, 7 watt resistor comes around and then directly uh, to here. The orange and the red come up and meet here. This is the one labeled as, I believe this is tri triangle? No, this is the half half moon is, is the top one, right? Triangle directly under it, square, and then uh, dash. So all four are done. Uh, again, just to point out, this is the negative terminal for all four capacitors. Uh, these are the positive terminals for the capacitors. They'll run across like this and have that common ground point, and that should be the replacement. At this point, we have the two 20s in. I worked from the middle first because it's easier to work from the middle outward. I've got the uh, positive side, uh, everything tacked in. Uh, the negative side I left loose at this point, obviously, because until all four are in, you don't want to tack them down. It also affords you the opportunity to rotate and whatever. I like to have the values up where you can see them. Now I need to put the uh, uh, the 50 and the 40 in on the top and bottom, get them all squared away, tack them in, uh, test them, and finish this uh, portion of the, of the operation. In another last minute change, I decided I didn't want that 7 watt resistor sitting right under the uh, 40 microfarad capacitor so I made a length of cable and moved it out there pushing it up against the chassis to dissipate the heat other than that I've connected all the capacitors now all I have to do is tie off the uh, negative side of the caps and we should be all done I need to test it check my wiring one more time and this should be good to go the uh, capacitor that remains on the other side the original multi can is nothing more than a showpiece at this point and a mounting point for this board the next activity I'm going to do is find out which pin is the outer foil on these capacitors. I'm going to use Mr. Carlson's method to do this. It's a slight variation on his method, but it's actually pretty much the same. I'm using this uh, Radio Shack uh, Electronics Learning Lab to make it easier. And all I really have is the oscilloscope connected directly to the lab. The test capacitor is in play here. Oscilloscope is here. And I have a um, my... Um, signal generator plugged in to the outlet, not really doing anything, but I have the AC wire wrapped around my arm. And all I do is with this limited amount of current going through this cable is plug in the capacitor as shown and simply touch the capacitor like this and observe the height of the waveform. In this case, it's showing a peak to peak of 22. 
Well, as I move my arm away, as I uncrunch my arm, it, it drops, but I put my arm together like that. You can see around, we'll say 17 for our purposes here, 17, 18, 20. Now, if I flip this capacitor around in the other direction, we can see that it changes to the peak to peak of 100. So we can see that this is definitely not ideal. We don't want to mark the positive as being the outer foil here or, or the negative is, is what we're looking for. Actually, I, I take it back. So I'm going to flip it around again. We can see right here, I'm going to flip it around again. And it dropped significantly. Flip it again. And it shot back up. And this is how I determine it. So if I go for the lower one, in this case, I'm going to flip it around for the lower one as such. And this is the lower one, whichever side is touching the negative wire right here will be marked as the outer foil. And I'll move to the next capacitor until all the capacitors are done. It should be no surprise, but just as a statistic, less than half of the capacitors that were tested had the foil, the outer foil on the right side of the label, which shows that, uh, as we all knew, but simply as a matter of a test, uh, the machines that label these capacitors do so however the capacitor falls into the machine. And the label on these caps are not indicative of any value on, on the terminals. You know, so, so it doesn't really mean anything. It's a 50-50 shot, and this pretty much displays that with just using seven capacitors. Statistics again show the other batch to be at just about 50%. If there were eight of them, it would probably be 50-50. This concludes knowing what the outer foil is for all of these polypropylene capacitors, which can now be installed in the oscilloscope, replacing the other ones, which will be tested on the uh, IT11 because I want to see if there's really um, I want to see if there's really uh, uh, as much leakage as is suspected in the um, in these capacitors, but I bought them anyway. I am curious, however, to know what the uh, leak down voltage is of these particular capacitors, these high voltage capacitors, which I've removed from the unit. These are rated to 1600 volts DC and my IT11 is only capable of 600 volts. So obviously if these things are good to 600 volts, there's no way I can test them on my equipment. However, if they fail before 600 volts, we'll be able to see that. So what I'm gonna do while I still have the oscilloscope off of the bench, I'm going to use my um, tester here to see uh, what kind of leakage we have and to show, you know, in, in, in uh, a leakage mode right here, just for, for those who aren't familiar with, if I, if I switch down to leakage, right now the, the terminals are disconnected. I'm at three volts and, and this is obviously ideal at the lowest setting, the paper mica setting, you know, so this is no leakage. So anything above that would, would be indicative of, of some sort of leakage, right? And, and this one is really sensitive, the paper mica one. It could see down, you'll start seeing it at a couple of microamps, this, this, uh, um, this meter will start deflecting. So let me set up, let's get started. Yeah, I have the preferred killer version of this test equipment. This is with the manual uh, um, discharge for reforming capacitors, which I generally don't do anyway, but it's good for experimenting. So you could give yourself a really, uh, really bad shock with this. But right now I'm, I'm set at three volts and I'm on leakage and I'm, and I'm gonna get this thing started. And you'll see that initial deflection as it charges, right? And I have the, the camera background light off, obviously, so it's easier to see the tube. And we're just gonna ramp this up and see what we get. I do, it's actually a very small capacitor, so it should, shouldn't be a whole lot of charge time on here. We're at 250. So I've tested this one to 600 volts. I can't go any higher. So according to this, 
uh, it's not leaking at 600 volts. So I'm going to test the other one. I'm going to discharge it first so I don't kill myself. And there we go. So I'll test the other one. I preset the test and we'll just start it off again. So again, uh, this one up to 600 volts, there is, there is no leakage on this capacitor. So this capacitor is good to 600 volts as well. I was, I was hoping for failure, but I don't know. It, it, it could very well fail before 1600, but it definitely hasn't failed at 600. This was that substitute 20 for the multi-capacitor can uh, that was removed. Uh, let's see what this does. Rated to 450. And, uh, oh, yeah, that's not good. That's, that's dead to 3 volts. Yeah, that's done. Now, granted, that's on, on paper mica, so that, that's registering the, the absolute minimum amount of leakage. Uh, Minilytic would show... It, it really doesn't matter. This this capacitor is done. Okay, so that one's dead. No testing any further. Let's discharge. This will be the 40 microfarad electrolytic capacitor that was removed. Get on the, the paper mic at, at 3 volts. It's already... They're, they're garbage. At Minilytic. I mean, they could be reformed. I could see it just slowly. Let's see if I could zoom in here. You could see it slowly starting to open as you apply a voltage. All right. I guess that would be salvageable at the rated voltage. Like, you're watching it happen now. You're watching the, the current drop as the voltage increases. The voltage is increasing, obviously, because this test set is no longer being loaded down because the current is dropping. But this eye is opening, but it's it's opening at three volts. This is this is a hundred and fifty volt capacitor, right? So, and this is all mini lytic, right? So this is not paper mica. This is like ten microamps between ten and thirteen microamps. You're looking microamps. You're looking at right now, right? So it's like okay, fine. So we move to like six. And now we're at like six volts, and the and the eye has closed again. And I'm sure that if we waited, you know, like a couple of minutes, you would see this eye start to open again. And there would be a, a point of diminishing returns here because eventually, you know, this capacitor just wouldn't do it because it's it's all dried out on the inside and all messed up. And yeah, this is junk, you know. The, None of this, none of this is really going to work anymore. All sorts of, all sorts of voltages are being dropped across this thing that shouldn't be. So yeah, garbage. I'm going to forego testing the other two. Uh, I just, I just don't see any point. Just a waste of time. So we're going to move on to the next phase here, which is uh, probably at this point is replacing the uh, the uh, other capacitors, the polyester or paper ones with the polypropylenes. I thought it might take a moment though, for all the work that was done under the chassis in support of trying to keep this looking the same, I think I did a pretty good job because you could see that these multi-core capacitors right here are look exactly like they did before, reinstalled exactly like they were, uh, this one only serving the purpose as, as a, uh, a bridge for ground, uh, this one is serving no purpose whatsoever. And everything working exactly as it used to. Uh, you will notice um, this electrolytic has been replaced. Um, this electrolytic has been replaced. And there is a third electrolytic down here that has been replaced. Between those, these three and those four, that makes up all of the electrolytic capacitors in this unit. Also, for the purpose of a question asked to me with regard to the 100 ohm resistor, um, the transformer I'm using is 54-26138852. Uh, that is the number that is on this transformer that was supplied with this Heathkit unit. 